Hey there, Bill DeWeese here, pro voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. Thanks for stopping by. Before we go any further, take just a moment to hit that uh, subscribe button. Make sure that you get notifications for all of my latest, greatest content. And of course, the YouTube algorithms like that as well. Uh, it helps to make sure that this content gets introduced to as many people as possible. Now, my sole mission as a voiceover coach is to help you be a profitable voiceover talent. And so to that end, today we are talking about a very, very important topic, and that is the quality of your audio, which means setting up a great home studio. And it seems to be the one thing that trips up a lot of people when they're getting started in voiceover. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, make sure you stay tuned because at the very end of the video, I'm going to share it with you a suggestion you may never have heard before. You might be quite surprised by it, but yet it might be the very thing that you've been looking for to make sure that you consistently record great audio. All right, all right, so let's get into it. Um, first of all, why is this all, you know, the, the audio quality of the home studio, how important is it in the grand scheme of things? It's really important. It's extremely important because regardless of your talent level or how great your demos are, how great your marketing efforts are, if the quality of your product is not stellar, then it is hard. Well, you can't be competitive. You just can't. So it starts with making sure that you have great audio. Having great audio starts with making sure that you have the proper space picked out and set up in your home. Now, here's the good news, because if you're feeling alone in all of this and you think, you know, I have to deal, I've got dogs, I've got kids, I've got traffic, I've got all of this stuff that makes it hard for me to record great audio. You're not alone because in today's voiceover business environment, 99.9% .9 of us record from home. Unless you live in LA or New York, and even there, maybe a very small fraction of people do most of their work in a studio. But the vast majority, the other 99.9% .9 of us, we work from a home studio. And most of us live in homes. We don't live in studios. Therefore, we deal with all of these environmental factors that can be issues. Uh, not long ago, I was in a session recording using Source Connect, patched into another studio on the East, East Coast, and the client was on the line. And, you know, in the middle of this, I've got, I've got a lawnmower going, dogs barking, had to stop the session. I was very embarrassed, but that's just, it happens to everybody. Everyone has to deal with this. So what we want to do is, A, make sure your audio sounds great, and B, minimize these interruptions uh, because the last thing you want to do in a session is be terrified that something like that's going to happen. The good news is these engineers work with voice talent all day long. This stuff happened, this, and I've been told before, it's just not unusual. It's just, it's the, it's the state of the industry. It's, you know, where we're all living and breathing right now and working daily. And, and nobody expects that it's going to be 100% flawless when it comes to these kind of interruptions, but we want to minimize them, right? So how do we do that? Well, Two things. Number one, we need, let's think, soundproofing and sound treatment. So we need to make sure that the space is as quiet as possible, soundproofing. And then we need to make sure that the space sounds as good as it can, sound treatment. So let's talk about uh, just a bit about soundproofing to begin with, because there are some things that you can do uh, as a at-home working voiceover talent to make sure that you've got a relatively quiet, not a perfect Again, because no, unless you live in a studio, nobody has a perfect environment, but we want to make it as close to perfect as, as we can. And what we're looking for, you know, what we want to shoot for is the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is a minus 60 dB noise floor, meaning that when you're being perfectly quiet, the environmental sounds, the HVAC, you know, your furnace, your air conditioning, the outside environment stays below minus 60 dB. Now, if you're thinking, okay, I don't understand noise floor. If you look at this, if you just search this channel, uh, my son, who is a, is a professional audio engineer and works with a lot of voiceover talent, has created some videos about that. And you can learn more about that. But that's ideally, it, you know, is what, is what we're searching for. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing to do is to find the best place that you have in your home or apartment to do that. Notice I said the best, not the perfect, because... There is no perfect, all right? So what we're trying to do is we want to make it as good as we possibly can. Generally speaking, there are two places to look for that. Number one is uh, an interior room, like an interior closet, for instance. When I first started working, I worked out of the master bedroom closet, which was an interior closet of my home. 
you listen closely right now, there's a helicopter going overhead. You may have to crank it up to hear it, but I just thought you might appreciate the fact that we all have to deal to, de to deal with these kind of things. But having an interior room is a really good place to start because it gives you more layers of protection against environmental or outside noise. Uh, and then there's the basement for those who have basements. I know not every part of the country you're going to find people that have basements. It doesn't make sense in some terrains and in some geographical areas to have basements in the Midwest where I live, almost everybody has a basement. So that can be another pla a good place to look because it's below ground. So it's protecting you from a lot of what goes on. Again, not perfect, but it, it can help. I can't use my uh, basement in the home that, that we recently moved into because it's unfinished. Um, and the furnace is exposed. It's not an enclosed furnace. It's just one huge open area. And the furnace slash air conditioner makes noise. And so I, I can't be there. So I'm here on the main floor. I'm exposed more than I would like to be. It's not 100% perfect. But again, the job is not perfection because you probably won't find that. You want to find the best place that you can. Now, if you can't, you know, if you live in an extremely noisy place, I mean, there's just never a time. Nighttime's not good. Daytime's not good. Uh, the interior's not good. The exterior's not good or not exterior, but, you know, toward the outside walls, there's no place that really works well for you. You may need to go a step further and look for something like I'm using right now, a prefab type of, of deal. Uh, this is a whisper room. That's the company whisper room manufactures. This it's not 100% quiet as evidenced by the helicopter that went over, but it does a pretty darn good job of knocking down a lot of that noise that I would have to deal with otherwise. Uh, there are other companies out there uh, th that make booths as well. Now, this is an, inv an investment. So don't go out there and just buy a booth because you think you need a booth. You may not need one. Uh, and you may or you may want to wait until you've made a few bucks before you do that. But that's just another, and you know, another thing that you can look at. But you want to start with the physical, you know, physically, what can you do to have a great space? Interior is typically good. Basement is typically good. And then, um, you know, some people, you know, who have construction skills or hire out for that, uh, you know, double wall or double um, drywall or room and, and knock down some extra sound doing that. Now that's a little further than I would want to go with it, but you may have that skill set, or you may know somebody who can help you, you know, to do that. And uh, you know, frame out maybe a little area in an unfinished basement or something like that, which may work for you. So again, that's, that's another possible solution, but start with physically finding the best space, you know, where, where can you best work? Now, after that, you can look at something like software. Software is a last line of defense when it comes to noise reduction. In other words, don't start with that. Find the best place you can to begin to knock down some of the big things that you may have to deal with. And then the software may help to take care of the rest of it. Now, there are two plugins, audio plugins, that will work within your DAW that I have worked with and currently work with that I think are phenomenal. There may be others, but these are two that I know of that I highly recommend. One is made by waves.com, waves.com. The plugin is called NS1, which stands for noise suppression, NS1. It's easy, easy to use. It's one knob. The higher you turn it up, the more it pulls back the environmental background noise. Now, is it going to take your dogs, take out dogs barking? Probably not. But if you have something like low level, you know, maybe the refrigerator, you can, can just hear it humming slightly in the background or your furnace or your air conditioner, those kind of things, it can really do a fantastic job with. The other is a plugin that actually you're hearing, hearing my voice through right now. It's made by Universal Audio. It's called C-Suite C-Vox. And uh, the thing about this particular plugin is you have to use a Universal Audio interface to use it because it only works within its own universal audio ecosystem and it's pretty pricey, but it works really, really well. And, uh, so I just have it on all the time. So it actually, it clears up a little bit of that extra noise in real time because you know, I need the help where I'm at. So these are just some things that you can do to help with the sound proofing end of things, find the best space that you can interior, if possible, possibly basement. Um, look at some software plugins like the NS one, or the C-Suite C-Vox to help clear up some of the extra noise that's left over. And that will get you well on your way to having quiet audio, but that's only half of the equation. The other half is, okay, what about sound treatment? 
So it needs to be quiet, but also you could have, you know, you could, you could, you could work out of a, an extra room that's extremely quiet, but the walls will reflect your voice, the sound off the wall. So you get kind of that hollowy reverb sound and that's, that's not good either. So sound treatment is what we're looking for. Something that will absorb, think absorbent, that will absorb the excessive sound waves in the room so that it's nice and what we would call, it's dry. Uh, we, we don't have all of that, you know, that sound bouncing around and it will make for nice, clean, crisp audio. What can you do? Well, thinking soft and absorbent, we could start with, uh, you know, set up in a closet that has clothes in it. That was my first studio. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my bedroom closet, and I was surrounded by clothing. And that clothing was actually the perfect acoustic treatment for me. It worked really, really well. Um, so that might be the answer for you. A lot of people use moving blankets. Sure, it's not, it's not professionally engineered for audio, but it can be a fairly inexpensive, easy solution just to knock down some of that extra uh, extra reflections and the extra reverb that you're going to get from the hard surfaces. Again, because we want to minimize those hard surfaces. Now, beyond that, um, there, there are more professional solutions that are available. They're going to be a little more expensive, but they tend to be more effective in what they do as well. Two companies that, that I recommend, Audimute, A-U-D-I-M-U-T-E.com, Audimute, and Auralex, Auralex.com, A-U-R-A, A-U-R-A-L-E-X. Uh, Automute makes a great sound blanket. I've got a number of them and they work really, they've got other things too. And they're designed to work really, really well. They're very, very effective. I love their, their stuff. And in this booth, my whisper room, I have Auralex acoustic foam, which should work as phenomenal as well. Now here's the, here's the thing that you need to, 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 here's the warning. Beware of this. Not all foam or acoustic materials are created equal. I learned this the hard way early in my career. I went on Amazon and I bought rolls of four inch, the thick stuff, four inch acoustic foam only to find out it was virtually use, useless. I mean, it helped a little bit, but it didn't do a very good job. Why? Because it was light and sparse. What you want is thick, dense, and heavy. The thicker, the denser, the heavier, the material, the better it will do with, at absorbing those sound waves. This Auralex is, it's professionally engineered and designed for acoustics, but beyond that, it is thick and heavy and it absorbs all that excessive sound. So again, just going out and buying foam may not be the answer, but if you're going to buy foam, if you buy the good stuff, it's going to go a long way in helping you. And another great thing about having good treatment is it does help to lower the noise floor. Now you don't buy acoustic foam solely for that purpose, but what happens is when you're knocking down some of those extra sound waves, the result is it, it can help to lower that noise floor just as kind of a, as a residual benefit. Now, all right, what's the last thing I mentioned I want to mention that may be the thing you've never heard about before, but might be the solution that you're looking for? A car. Yes, a car. Modern cars are designed with two things in mind, the cockpit itself. Number one, to be quiet. Is it soundproof, 100% quiet? No, of course not. But it's far quieter than what's happening on the outside of the car. Secondly, they are acoustically designed to make sure it knocks down all of that sound so that you don't get this big hollow sound when you're trying to have a conversation. It's designed for the acoustics to sound good in the car. Now, this may not always be feasible because of cold weather, hot weather. Uh, you know, it might be just something that you use when you're on the road traveling, maybe to do some auditions. But for some of you who are really struggling to get good sound, this might be an answer, at least a temporary answer where you go out and you set up in your car and you do some work in there because it may just sound really good and be really quiet. But it's at least worth checking out because cars are designed with that purpose in mind. They try to make, you know, your ride as as comfortable and as pleasing as possible. And so you can let that work to your advantage. Again, the idea is that we get your audio sounding great so that you can be competitive because you may have the skill set, you may have the demos, you may have the marketing machine in place, but we've got to make sure that your product is as good as it possibly can be. And that always starts with the quality of your audio. If you're struggling and you need some help with that, you feel like you need some professional help, just shoot me a message. And I can point you in the direction of Alex DeWeese. Again, my son, the professional audio engineer. 
Uh, but check out some of these, uh, these solutions, and I think you'll find it will go a long way in improving your audio and helping you to be a profitable voiceover talent. Thanks again for checking out the video. I look forward to talking to you again very soon.